everyone and welcome back to my channel or my Instagram depending on where you're watching maybe Facebook as well but then when I post on Facebook it's normally linked to YouTube or Instagram so who knows um but yeah I've been gone for a long time uh, I wasn't expecting to not post for this long basically I'm going to explain in this video why that's happened um and also my plans now that everything is a bit more settled um, if I sound annoyed it's because I just filmed this entire video um, literally for like maybe 25-30 minutes and my camera had actually died um, well not died, it ran out of space, sorry I'm so used to it, the battery being the problem like oh my god, maybe that's gonna happen now <laughs> but um, yeah, it ran out of space and only recorded for 2 minutes but uh, we live, <laughs> we move on, it's fine <laughs> either way uh, I will start by saying the biggest thing that has happened, uh, I finished my master. So I started it in September last year. It's in creative writing. Uh, I'm sure most of you know that, or all of you probably know that anyway, because it's only my friends that really watch these. Um, but yeah, it's in creative writing. I started last September and it has now finished, um, which is a bit like strange. <laughs> it's still like, um, still feels a bit like surreal that it's over, to be honest. Uh, like I have free time again sometimes. And yeah, it's really strange to f not feel like guilty for like reading or like reading things that I'm not supposed to be reading like not academic stuff um but yeah it's been it's been a really interesting journey actually it's been so helpful if you are considering doing a qualification in creative writing I can't recommend Kingston enough like it has been the lecturers couldn't have been more helpful the like there's some other things that happened with the university that like weren't so great um communication wise but I'm just going to put it down to 2020 and everything that was happening um and also DSA like we, we all know DSA if you've dealt with DSA you know all about DSA <laughs> um but yeah like the lecturers could not have been better I had an amazing experience I feel like I have learned so much as well and um, I really can't wait to share my dissertation with you all. Um, it's not the the dissertation itself isn't an academic piece of writing. It's uh, just like fifteen thousand words of creative text. And then I also have to do a academic essay to back the dissertation up. That was the problem. <laughs> that is why I have been gone for so long. Um, it was a challenge. We'll put it that way. It's not that I didn't enjoy it because actually I did, and I feel like actually. A lot of the stuff that I learned, a lot of the stuff that I was researching will actually be quite useful uh, to my writing in the future. Um, but it just trying to trying to put it all together in an academic format has just never been my strong point, to be honest. Um, but yeah, my dissertation, everything is now handed in, um, which is yeah, that's the the biggest the biggest thing. I don't know when I get my results is the other thing so <laughs> we it's not in my hands anymore though so <laughs> what can be done kind of like the camera <laughs> running out of space in the middle of me filming um on the day that I handed in my dissertation I started a new job on the same day and um it is more of a career than a job I'm not going to go into too much detail um just because I mean I've never really gone into that much detail about my jobs anyway because it's not like that relevant to what I'm doing on this channel or on my Instagram or just whatever you follow it's more like a personal thing um but I'm now working in early years education uh which I'm really pleased about these opportunities don't normally come up for someone like me who doesn't have a prior experience or any qualifications in like a relevant field um but this opportunity came up and I'm really grateful uh for the place for taking me on and it's yeah it's the start of a new adventure for me uh it's completely it's so new <laughs> is the only way I can put it um I struggle quite a lot with routine which sounds really strange um but I am just trying to like work my way into it kind of figure things out so if everything seems a little all over the place at the moment that is why for me I'm just kind of like 
finding my feet in this um but it's a really good positive thing and i'm yeah i'm so grateful that it's happened um it's not that i didn't like my old job either like i did um it's just that i've been doing retail for like nine years now i think it is i it's just i i wanted to move on to something a bit more um like substantial if that makes any sense i don't know if that's the right word but something that is a bit more like fulfilling and retail was just getting a little bit like much for me um i don't know what it is but people after the lockdowns people just got really horrible uh and it was really bringing me down like i had one day back in the shop and just like just realized how much i just wasn't enjoying it anymore um so which is a bit of a shame because i actually really liked the perfumery i liked the concept of it um but this is the start of something completely new for me um hopefully something a little bit more like stable and permanent but yeah i'm so excited um that's all i can really say on that to be honest um a week before i handed in my dissertation and started the new job i moved house uh, so you've probably noticed I'm in a different background. There are no people outside on the street watching me film this. Uh, it's just people's back gardens and I'm upstairs so hopefully they can't see me. Um, yeah, it, the house that we lived in, it was okay. Um, but it was just, I think we outgrew it a little bit and the neighbours were becoming a bit of an issue. <laughs> to put it nicely. Um, and there was a few other things with the house, like, um, and we noticed this even more so when, when we were moving our furniture out, but it was very damp and very mouldy. Um, I was diagnosed with a few like health conditions while we lived in that house. Um, I was told that I have chronic hives, which like, <laughs> what can I say about that really? Um, and also I, um, after, it, at the very beginning of the pandemic, I got COVID. Um, my whole video is going to disappear off the internet now that I've said that naughty word, isn't it? Um, but after that, I was having some trouble breathing and was told that I'm asthmatic and was given two inhalers to take. Um, and these problems were like, getting quite bad in that house, I noticed. Um, and since being here, they've not like gone, um, especially not the asthma, but the hives I've noticed, I've not had many at all. It used to be like at least one a day would appear um well like not like one solitary hive <laughs> but like just like you know i mean like just like a patch or like a limb had hives um but like yeah i've literally barely noticed any since being here so interesting that um but when we moved the furniture we noticed that the mold was worse than we thought like it was on our furniture as well it was that bad um i had to throw out loads of clothes like loads of my clothes kept going moldy my shoes kept going moldy um i'm trying to save some pieces of clothes at the moment but i don't think there's much hope <laughs> um pvc and mold don't go well together apparently um so yeah i've moved house and on the subject of health i um back in june or july i had another needs assessment um i think that's the right way to put it like when i had my dyspraxia one that's what it was called i think it's the same thing um basically we had some suspicions that i might have adhd um it's been like a thing we've thought i say we <laughs> me and my family and my partner um that has been like discussed for a while and like me personally as well um when i had the dyspraxia diagnosis it answered a lot of my questions but not all um you know i still felt very like kind of I, I can't think of the right word but like separated from everyone like quite separate um and there are a few things at I'm not saying everyone with ADHD is the same, by the way, because what I'm about to say is probably going to sound quite insulting. But um, I felt, especially at the age that I am now, um, I felt like emotionally I'm quite immature. I felt like um, some of the reactions I had to certain situations maybe like wasn't appropriate. Um, or like, that like certain things that shouldn't upset me were upsetting me more than they really should be. But yeah, so it wasn't a surprise really, but um, the extent of which I have it was a bit of a surprise. Like she, it's the only test I've ever got full marks in. <laughs> um, yeah, I basically uh, scored full in like all sections apart from one, which I was one off scoring full. So um, it that was a little bit surprising. And the person doing the assessment was a bit also kind of surprised that it was never brought up uh, during education. 
um but again like it's it's frustrating it's good to know now but it obviously is a bit frustrating that i wasn't able to have the same support everyone else had um but it is what it is um in the same appointment i was also diagnosed with ocd which um and again this is going to sound really strange it could already be on my record as a diagnosis but because of what was happening when i was 14 i don't know what got kept on my record and what they just dismissed um so when i did bring that up to her and said like, i said like, i'm not really sure um but she confirmed in the assessment that i do have it um but she thinks i'm in remission which is really cool because i i don't really remember a point in my life like not having it to be honest um like even as a child i still i'm pretty sure i've just always had it i don't know where it came from i don't know why <laughs> um but it's nice to know uh, it's nice to hear that she thinks i'm in remission and i personally feel like i am as well i wouldn't have taken on my new job if i didn't feel like i was um but yeah that's one thing and she also diagnosed me with ptsd which again it wasn't it wasn't a surprise but in and like this is going to sound really strange but it was almost a relief because with that i was honestly starting to think that some things were in my head um some people were genuinely making me feel like it never happened to me um which is a shame is it a shame i don't know <laughs> that's not the right way to word this um but yeah it was it was almost a relief to have someone like believe me um i i would like to do like a video kind of elaborating um with the PTSD exchange it's, there's like two sections to it there's one event that happened which i just had decided i'm not going to talk about um because it's caused a lot of like stress and problems in my personal life and i'm just trying my best to move on from it um the other side of it i would actually really like to talk about because it's to do with um i was like bullied by tutors and peers um other students when i was doing my degree my undergraduate um and it, it i think having this experience in my masters where everyone's been so like kind and supportive and patient um i would actually really like to do a video on it and like i think it could possibly potentially help other people um i think i just need to heal a bit more first um but yeah i'm starting to waffle now and like stop and start talking i sound like a robot when i do that um i, I think it's just that's probably the dyspraxia to be honest like i just don't think my brain is going fast enough in my mouth <laughs> all the shit that just keeps coming out and my brain is still like 10 seconds behind like um you know that meme with like all the different internet providers and then internet explorer is really late that's what my brain is like um but yeah uh talking about things that are kind of crappy as well um the q a video that i filmed <laughs> was a disaster <laughs> um it like literally the camera like ran out of space it died it did everything that possibly could have happened and um loads of, like i remember it was just like a really busy day those people were walking past my house and um if you don't know this i used to set my camera up um the only room that had like natural light was the living room and i used to set my camera up uh, right in front of the window and people would i'd be like filming i'd be sat like on the floor talking to the camera and i know that probably looks a bit strange to some people but you know we do live in a day and age where like it happens i don't know um but people would literally like watch me um from outside i had no net curtains so people could just see straight in um which was quite stressful <laughs> and a bit distracting um and that happened like a lot that day so like it just and also doing my makeup and talking i'm already struggling to, to talk and to gather my thoughts um without doing my makeup at the same time it just might not have been for me um i still have screenshots of all the questions though so i'm probably gonna try again but just not doing my makeup at the same time finally where am i going from here so basically i need to pick one of my projects to kind of um home in on focus on and complete um i'm just struggling to decide which one because the first one i submitted alina the witch um which you can find on my youtube or my instagram part one is on instagram part two is only on youtube um but you can find both on my youtube um basically yeah i'm struggling to decide between alina the witch or turning up the tides which i did for my dissertation so i've obviously got ten thousand words more of turning up the tides but you know there's nothing to say i can't like catch up with elena elena the witch will probably be a shorter book anyway um but it's just deciding which project to kind of um focus on now but that is where you come in um i would love for everyone to get involved and help me make the decision 
what I'm gonna do is dedicate an entire week to each book. Um, so I'll do videos on like YouTube, um, Instagram, Facebook. Um, I'm, I've got a TikTok now as well. Um, and I'm gonna do like um, dedicated time for each project. So I'll do like a q and I'll talk about the plot. Um, I'll obviously read now. You haven't heard Turning of the Tides yet, but I'm gonna read to you some of it. Um, Alina the Witch, I'll obviously just read like a little bit further from where I think I got up to chapter two, so I'll probably start from there. Um, but Turning of the Tides, I'll go right from the beginning. Um, so you can hear kind of equal amounts of both. <laughs> Hopefully it will even out that way. Um, but yeah, I, the idea is that you get a good like sense of like who the characters are and the, the storyline and, and you can decide which one you would like me to continue with. Um, obviously like in time both will be completed, that is the idea. But um, like for now I'm just at a bit of like a crossroads, I don't know which project I want to spend some time with, I like them both so I'm struggling to decide. Um, so it'd be really cool if like everyone could get involved with that. Um, let me know, like yeah, obviously not now because you, well, you do know Alina the Witch but you don't know Turning of the Tides, maybe you like it more, maybe you don't. Um, I would also like to have a week dedicated to Wise Magic. I um, so I put it back on Amazon uh, to help out financially during the lockdowns. Um, it's still up now, but I have decided after completing my masters, it's not like a reflection of me as an author now. Um, and I know that like lots of like authors, artists, musicians, whatever, will probably say the same thing about their like first ever piece that they put into the world. Um, but I feel like it's not that I want to like erase it or anything, that's not the case. Um, but what I would like to do is probably take it off of Amazon. But if you wanted to buy it, then you can still message me and, and I'll find a way to make that happen. Um, like I'll still, you know, like it's it won't be completely unavailable. Um, I think is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> um, but I would still love to do a week dedicated to that. So I'll do like a QA. and a um, It's the same structure as the other ones. Um, and like a reading, I don't actually know. If I've done a reading of Eyes Magic, which is really interesting because obviously that like it, it turned two recently. Um, the Kickstarter nearly I think it would have ended around this time two years ago. Um, and I really want to see how many copies I've sold because I honestly think it's like around maybe 80. Um so I'm gonna wrap things up here because my camera just um is claiming Allegedly it is on full battery but it just turned itself off. I was in the middle of a sentence and the screen just went back in. It made that little sound that it does. Um, I've checked the footage back and it would appear that the only thing that was lost is my train of thought. Um, but I think all the footage is still there. I hope so because I can't do this for a third time. Um, I'm already losing daylight and I would really like some lunch. It's like 4 p.m. now. I started this at two. Um, but yeah, either way, um, if you got this far in the video, then thank you. Um, please leave me a pumpkin emoji in the comments if you did, um, especially on Instagram, because it like obviously it helps out a lot. Um, I don't know what it is with Instagram lately, but well, maybe it's the fact that I haven't posted for like two months. But like, either way, I don't know what it was like in the build up to that, um, the only people that would comment, it was just like a thousand spam people and I was getting like multiple messages um, just saying like, hi, um, if you pay me, I'll promote your book. Like, I ain't paying you shit, love. Like, what if I pay you and you don't like it? Are you just gonna say something positive? Because that doesn't sound very honest to me. That is a whole nother conversation anyway. Um, so yeah, I can't even remember where I was going with this. Leave me a comment. Um, if you got this far in the video, leave me a pumpkin emoji. Or if you have any suggestions, anything that you would like to see from me, definitely let me know. I'm open to anything. Um, maybe not anything actually, um, <laughs> within reason. I'm just gonna shut up. <laughs> it's been a long day. Um, and if you can tell my voice as well, I've got a cold, which is really frustrating. Um, Especially because when I talk, um, it like it's a dyspraxic thing, but apparently the same with ADHD as well. Um, I slur a lot of my words, or like I mispronounce things. Um, so it's quite hard to understand me anyway. I think when I talk and I go quite fast sometimes, and then sometimes I stop and start. 
but uh, yeah, either way, it's probably even harder because my, my throat's quite sore, so trying to talk it's just not coming out how I want it to, um, which is unfortunate, but you know, these things happen. Um, so yeah, uh, if you enjoyed this, let me know. Um, if there's anything you want to see, let me know. Uh, leave me a comment, like, subscribe, follow my accounts. Um, I've got so much planned for the next few months and I'm finally at a position where I can fulfill <laughs> these plans. So yeah, definitely uh, keep following, stay up to date. <laughs> I'm just going to go and have lunch now, everyone. <laughs> Bye.